CM Punk has just been eliminated by Kane at the Royal Rumble and he's deflated. Not only on screen but behind the scenes. But what will he do? Well we begin our story the night after this timeline was forever altered. As CM Punk comes out in the middle of the ring, stands still and asks one very simple question. Do I have everyone's attention now? Then he proceeds to curse out the company. And just like last time, he's tearing the company to shreds and preaching the same values he did years ago. But as he's berating the company he works in, his microphone cuts out and Punk walks out frustrated. So after an attempted company burial, Triple H opens the show the following week and announces that CM Punk isn't in the building and that he will be reprimanded for his actions. However, Daniel Bryan's rise to the top is also occurring at the same time, so the game has his hands full. So if him focusing in on Daniel Bryan, the director of operations Kane continues to assault and brutalize CM Punk which leads into the Elimination Chamber. And before Triple H takes on Daniel Bryan in a similar match to their real life counterpart at WrestleMania 30, Kane and CM Punk compete in a match with the stipulation that if CM Punk loses, he is fired. But does that happen? Well after a very competitive contest, Punk lifts the big man up and drives him down with a GDS. Punk is still in the company, but Triple H won't be in the company of Batista and Randy Orton in the main event of WrestleMania as Daniel Bryan overcomes comes the odds to punch his ticket to the biggest show of the year. So where does this leave the game and more importantly CM Punk? Well with Kane defeated, Punk makes his target crystal clear. To tear down the authority and with no more lines of defence, the game challenges the straight edge saviour to a match at WrestleMania 30. And with hatred in his eyes, CM Punk accepts. So leading into the show, the feud gets violent really quickly, with both men showing their pure anger towards each other for one reason or another. Nevertheless, it's time. Triple H vs CM Punk, WrestleMania 30. And it's a phenomenal brawl between the two men. No one has the advantage of both hitting everything out of their arsenal, although in the end, Punk makes Triple H go to sleep. CM Punk picks up the victory, but he isn't the only one as Daniel Bryan finishes his story in the main event of the show. And the following night, the Yes Movement end up kicking off the show and with no authority in sight, Daniel Bryan announces his first challenger for his WWE Championship. And of course, it's CM Punk who walks out. And leading into the show, the rivalry between these two remains very respectful as it's all about who is the best wrestler in WWE. So at Extreme Rules, the match is set and it's an absolute banger and they're showing why they're the best in the world. They're throwing everything at each other, Punk hit a GDS and some more of his vintage offense. Although Brian retaliated with his own flurry of offense, but after 20 minutes of phenomenal technical wrestling, by the skin of his teeth, Daniel Bryan retains the WWE Championship. And everyone knows what happens to Brian following this. But what about Punk? Well, with him having a ton of nagging injuries, according to the man himself, he'd have over a year off resting time, although he'd still do a certain Colt Cabana interview, granted it would be far more tame in comparison to our timeline, as CM Punk and WWE would ultimately settle things. So, when or does he even return? Could he be the number 30 entrant? No. Could he confront Triple H to kick off WrestleMania 31? Still no. It's looking like he may never come back. Extreme Rules, Payback, Money in the Bank, Battleground, all of these shows showered with CM Punk chants. Even SummerSlam gets the same treatment, especially with the title unification match between Seth Rollins and John Cena. Even with Rollins winning, the crowd still chant for Punk. But did I mention this was taking place in Chicago? And the crowd go absolutely ballistic! And so is Rollins! As before the show goes off the air, a stare down for the ages occurs. But with the authority back in power, it's announced the following night that Punk has to earn an opportunity to face Rollins. Therefore, over the coming weeks, Punk is seen assisting John Cena and Sting against the authority, whilst also having a mini program of New Day and more particular, Kofi Kingston, as Punk believes Kingston can be so much more and pushes him to prove that. However, at Night of Champions, it's announced that there will be a tournament to crown the next challenger for the WWE Championship championship at Survivor Series. And with the authority in the ring, they announce that the first match will take place tonight. But without any warning or preparation time, CM Punk is the first man out. And he is quite clearly livid at this. But who would his opponent be? Well, returning for a chance at the WWE Championship is the one and only Chris Jericho. And with the history between these two men, it's a vicious technical matchup. Although in the end, Punk makes Jericho go to sleep. So Punk advances and on the following night, he makes his feelings known towards Triple H of a promo in the middle of the show. However, the following week, Punk is in action against Cesaro in a star making performance with the Swiss Cyborg. But can he overcome Punk? Well after a 15 minute masterclass, Punk hoists the Swiss Superman up and plants him with a GDS. And just like that, Punk advances in the tournament and the following week it's time for the quarterfinals. CM Punk versus Kofi Kingston, who although he sticks by the New Day side, he starts going into solo competition with him managing to pick up victories over Luke Harper and Kevin Owens. And there is mutual respect between the two men as Kofi Kingston sends New Day to the back, so it's a fair one on one contest. And the chemistry 
issues off the charts between the two. It's looking like Kofi might be able to pull off the victory of his life. Puck is on the ropes, although out of absolute nowhere, Puck hits a GDS from Kingston attempting a dive. So yet again, Puck manages to advance in the tournament and now it's the week before Hell in a Cell and it's time for the semi-finals. CM Punk versus Neville who, similar to Kingston, picked up several big-time victories over the likes of King Barrett, Tyler Breeze, and Mr. Money in the Bank, Sheamus. And the match quality is also just as high as Pug's previous tournament matches. Neville has the speed and agility, whereas Pug has the experience factor. But once again, it's looking like Neville could get the humongous upset. But once again, Pug hits a desperate go to sleep to pick up the win. But who does he join in the finals? Well, at Hell in a Cell, CM Pug takes on Roman Reigns, who defeated Dean Ambrose in the semi-finals to get here. And the crowd are showering Punk with love, and Reigns Reigns with hatred. However, Reigns is on top. He's smashing Punk into the ground, and it's looking bleak for the voice of the voiceless. Although similarly to the previous matches, he gets an opening, but instead he accidentally knocks the ref down. And Reigns goes ballistic. He gets a chair and starts hammering into Punk. Ambrose comes out to try and stop it, and he gets pummeled as well. And with the cheating, Roman Reigns picks up the victory and earns a shot at the WWE Championship. But at what cost? Well, on the Raw after Hell, it's full blown warfare. Rollins, Reigns, Punk. Punk and Ambrose all talking and all brawling with each other and it's announced that next week there'll be a tag team match which occurs with the baby faces going over. But unfortunately some events cannot be changed. As with Seth Rollins injured less than two weeks away from Survivor Series, the planned main event has been thrown into disarray. However, due to Punk and Ambrose's distaste and hatred for Reigns, it's announced that Roman Reigns will be anointed as the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion as out of respect for Rollins, he is keeping that version of the WWE belt. Although he isn't the champion which gives Reigns two championships although they are still united. But for how long? As it's announced it'll be a triple threat two out of three falls match of each fall representing a championship at Survivor Series. So at the show, the match is set and it's absolute carnage. No one has the advantage although during the chaos, Ambrose manages to nail the dirty deeds on the reins to become the new World Heavyweight Champion. But with carnage, there comes opportunity as Sheamus cashes in his briefcase on the World Heavyweight Champion in the middle of the match to become the new champion. And once the dust settles, the war continues. But who will walk out as WWE Champion? Can Punk become a six-time champion? Can Ambrose get back-to-back -back victories, can Reigns retain? Well, in the end, thanks to a legal low blow, Reigns manages to retain the WWE Championship after pinning Ambrose. So where does this leave CM Pug? Well, seeing as he never got pinned, Pug sets his sights on Roman's WWE Championship reign as leading it to TLC. It's an even playing field between the two when it comes to taking jabs on the microphone and in the ring, although in the ring it was a lot more vicious. So at TLC, the match is a TLC match, shocker I know, and it's an accurate representation of the build-up as weapons are used by both competitors in brutal fashions. Punk is matching Reigns' new style beat for beat, but he can't keep Reigns down to grab the championship. And Reigns pushes the ladder off, and Punk is dangling. He's in a precarious position, but then Reigns does the unthinkable. Reigns has absolutely broken Punk in half. He's motionless, and thanks to possibly the OMG moment of the year, Roman's reign continues whilst Punk is at his lowest. Well, he has an opportunity to get everything he wants, the Royal Rumble, but he's gonna have to put the shift of his life in to win as he draws the number four spot. And he's outlasting the field. He even gets a few eliminations along with a stare down with someone who could challenge CM Punk's title of being the best in the world. Although in the end, the final four are himself, Triple H, Sheamus, and Neville. And Punk is still in there. He even manages to eliminate Triple H and makes it to the final two. It's him or Neville who can win. A rematch from their tournament match a month ago. Can Neville redeem himself? Well, after a great mini match, Punk throws out the man who gravity forgot to become the 2016 Royal Rumble winner. But who will he choose? The WWE Champion Roman Reigns or the World Heavyweight Champion Dean Ambrose? Well, although he has history with both men, the following night, Punk makes his choice. So, leading it to the show shows, Punk and Reigns' rivalry reaches a boiling point. They can't stay away from each other. Whether it be backstage or in the ring, neither man can resist beating the other down. And it's time for the main event of the evening. CM Punk vs Roman Reigns. The main event Punk always wanted. And it's a brilliant 25 minute match between the pair with both throwing everything they can at each other to try and get the win. Reigns even manages to nail a spear but Punk kicks out. But Punk retaliates and tries to make Reigns go to sleep. Although he also just kicks out. They've thrown their best shots at each other. What more can they do to each other? Well Punk 
has one big move left in stock, a move hardly ever performed in WWE, the Pepsi Plunge, and CM Punk nails it, he sprawls into the cover, and just like that, he is now a six time WWE Champion, Punk has finished his story, but what's next for Punk? Well what about a phenomenal dream match, as after defeating Chris Jericho 24 hours prior and pinning him again in a fatal 4 way match, AJ Styles pledges his ticket to be CM Punk's first opponent for his WWE Championship at Payback, and the match is absolutely phenomenal, no pun intended. A dream match coming to life as they showcase why they are the best professional wrestlers on the planet, although in the end, Punk successfully retains the WWE Championship. But who was next to challenge the best in the world? Well, after gaining so much momentum, Punk personally challenges the King of Swig, the Swiss Cyborg Cesaro, to a match for the championship, as Punk believes Cesaro is a threat to his status as the best in the world. And with mutual respect leading into the event, there are no brawls involving either man, as all they do during the time is talk and wrestle. Thus, at Extreme Rules, the match is on, and just like the month prior, Punk is continuing to prove why he has earned the moniker of the best in the world. But it takes two to dance as Cesaro is more than holding his own to produce a match of the year contender. Can Cesaro finally do it? Can he become WWE Champion? Well, after 30 minutes of utter brilliance, Punk shows who the champ truly is as he just manages to nail a GTS onto Cesaro and he retains. The crowd are in awe over what they've just seen, but the show isn't done just yet as Seth Rollins returns and nails a pedigree onto a knackered Punk. So leading into Money in the Bank, it's warfare between bitter rivals Rollins and Punk. The pure hatred is on full display between the two athletes. Each second they're on the show and on screen they're either tearing each other apart to shreds physically or verbally. But the match itself doesn't end up taking place as Punk is seen laid out like a bloody carcass backstage. And with Punk injured and forced to vacate the WWE Championship, everyone is speculating who done it but we don't get any answers or clues until the night falling battleground. As in front of a packed Chicago crowd, CM Punk returns and demands answers but gets nothing. So just like Stone Cold did in the 2000s when he came back from injury, Injury, Punk goes around attempting to get answers no matter what it takes. And during this period, it's announced CM Punk has been drafted to Raw, which doesn't calm Punk's determination. However, lucky for Punk, his attacker ends up on the same show. As on the go home show before SummerSlam, Punk is in the ring and smack talking about anyone and everyone, which leads to a certain prize fighter coming out and confronting the voice of the voiceless. Was he the one who attacked him? Well, we find out the answer very quickly as Kevin Owens brutalizes Punk. He pounds him into the ground and leaves him in a bloody mess. And with Punk now not being anywhere near 100%, the biggest party of the summer turns into the biggest funeral for Punk's career as Owens absolutely dismantles him. He decimates him in almost every way. Owens even hits an apron powerbomb which nearly breaks Punk's spine in half. He throws him in the ring and if that wasn't bad enough, he then hits one of the most dangerous moves in professional wrestling and with Punk broken, Kevin Owens covers him and picks up the monumental win. And with this, Punk is put on the shelf indefinitely as some even question if Punk's career is over. People don't even think he'll be back at the Rumble but Oh, how they were wrong. In at number 30, returning after only a few months when everyone thought he'd never come back, is the man who drops pipe bombs, the man who is the voice of the voiceless. He enters and instantly makes an impact by eliminating the beast Brock Lesnar, and he makes it out to the final two. It's him, or the list maker Chris Jericho. Who can win the Royal Rumble? Well, with Jericho being best friends of Owens, Punk doesn't hold back, and after a 10 minute mini match, Jericho just manages to throw him over the top rope. It's heartbreak for Punk, but luckily for him, there's one more stop before WrestleMania 33. And with the heated rivalry between Owens and Pug, Stephanie McMahon announces Fastlane's main event between the two. And with Owens betraying Jericho, everyone wants Pug to win the championship and dethrone Owens. So at Fastlane, the match is on and it's an absolute war. But war has casualties, and as soon as it's looking like Pug can finish his story, Samoa Joe distracts him long enough for another heartbreak to occur. Owens has retained and stands tall as Joe stands on top of the ramp. But why did Joe do it? Well, the whole world finds out the following following episode of Raw as he says that Punk is taking the limelight away from talent who haven't had a chance to shine. People like him, people like Sami Zayn. Punk continues to rob him of a chance in the limelight and Punk emphasises with Joe and understands him although he still wants to whoop his ass on the grandest stage in the mall. So it's time, Wrestlemania 33 and Joe and Punk are on the latter half of the show and they tear up a storm with their phenomenal in-ring work and storytelling. But Joe is vicious, he's something Punk hasn't competed against in years and that inexperience and unfamiliar environment eventually makes him stuck in a coquina clutch. Can he get out or will he have to tap out? Well he does neither as CM Punk passes out to Samoa Joe. Punk puts over the future of the company in a fantastic match but what's next for CM Punk? Well over the course of the next year Punk 
doesn't appear on the main roster as he decides to work with the future of WWE and starts appearing weekly on NXT. And during this period, he has unbelievable matches and programs with the likes of Adam Cole and Aleister Black. He even competes for Andrade's NXT title, although he ends up coming up short. However, his last match in NXT is at NXT TakeOver New Orleans in the inaugural NXT North American Championship match, although he does come up short. But on the Raw after WrestleMania 34, the man himself makes a return in his hometown and the crowd go absolutely mental. And he has one thing to say, one thing to announce, that he is gunning for the greatest Royal Rumble, as it's announced the winner of the match will receive a WWE title match the following pay per view, that being Money in the Bank. And it's time, but it won't be easy as Punk enters at number one. But who is number two? Well, it's none other than the man who just came out of retirement, Daniel Bryan, and they tear each other apart throughout the entire match as he makes it down to the final four. Daniel Bryan, CM Punk, Braun Strowman, and Bobby Lashley. All four men have a chance to pick up the win and face Lesnar, but it won't be Punk as Daniel Bryan eliminates the quote-unquote best in the world. Punk can't believe it, but he knows what he has to do next, or really what he wants to do, as on the following Raw, he challenges Daniel Bryan to a match at SummerSlam to see who truly is the best in the world, and with Bryan accepting, both men train themselves for the show for months on end. But there's no more time spare, as for the last time ever, Daniel Bryan will take on CM Punk, and not only is it match of the night, it might be up there as one of the greatest professional wrestling matches ever, although in the end, Bryan ends up making Punk tap out to the yes lock and once again Punk is heartbroken but this time he goes home. He doesn't know what to do with himself and with that this section of Punk's life and career comes to an end. However we're on the Raw after Wrestlemania 35 and we kick off the show in the best way possible. The new Universal Champion Seth Rollins comes out and with a tear in his eyes it's looking like it's going to be a heartfelt way to kick off the show until... CM Punk is here, he's back in WWE, and he immediately sets his sight on the biggest prize possible on a man he has a personal hatred for, as Punk gets in the ring and says, Wow, well done you Seth, you beat the beast, you became champion, but you wouldn't be here without me. So, if you don't mind, let the man who made you kick off the show. And Rollins bites back and screams, You try to ruin my home if I recall correctly, you whiny little bitch. And I won't let you stroll onto my show, ruining my moment. So if you want this, you can work for it. You don't get to badmouth my company and pretend you're happy to be back and get a championship match against me. Yeah, you're, you're right, Seth. I'm only back for a few reasons, but one of them is a good paycheck. Probably get what you do in a year just for appearing on this very show. And about working for a title match against you? Fine. Next week, I'll come back in the ring. Whoop whoever I have to until I get a shot at that championship. Good. Now piss off and do your oh I'm so glad to be back stick later. This is my moment. And with a smirk on his face, Punk allows Seth to open the show and leaves him to celebrate. But backstage he's confronted by someone who can challenge his title of being the best in the world. So you're you're back in action next week, huh? Well, let's see how rusty you are in the ring. Punk doesn't even say a word, but the match is made official for next week with the winner taking on Seth Rollins for the championship and money in the bank. But before that, Punk comes out at the end of the show, stands firmly in the center of the ring, and says, You know, I was gonna do a good long speech saying how much I missed this place, but I didn't. I only missed you. You and a buttload of money, mind you, are the only reasons I came back to professional wrestling. But don't you worry, I've got some goals I need to check off before I call it quits for good. I know first is whooping Styles next week and taking Rollins as championship away from him at Money in the Bank. Then I'll hold that belt, make it actually important whilst on TV, amazing concept I know, and lastly, main event, Wrestlemania. Punk has set out his goals, but can he accomplish this first as the following week, he is set to take on AJ Styles. It's a dream match on free television, but as soon as the match begins, it immediately falls apart as both men battle on the outside of the ring. However, they don't realize the referee's count, and before they can even begin wrestling, the referee counts them both out. No one can believe it, but Rollins isn't happy. He storms out and once again screams, if neither of you can beat the other, I guess I'll just have to whoop both your asses at Money in the Bank. Triple threat style. Good luck, boys. Seth drops a bombshell onto both men, and it's instantly made official for Money in the Bank. And after it's announced, the fight between AJ and Punk continues until Punk stands tall, and he walks up the ramp and stares a hole through Rollins.
It's time for arguably the biggest match in Money in the Bank's history. AJ Styles, CM Punk, Seth Rollins fighting to call themselves champion. And it's an unbelievable clash of stars. The work rate of the contest is off the charts. And they're fighting with everything they have. Who will win? Can AJ Styles become WWE Champion once again? Can CM Punk begin to finish his story? Can Rollins retain in his first defence? Well, after 20 minutes of unbelievable mind-melting action, Punk is taken out by a beautifully executed phenomenal forearm on the outside of the ring. Punk is out like a light, but Rollins and Styles are still standing. They're going at it, but with a kick to the gut and a stomp, the Beast Slayer just retains the championship. But Punk was never pinned. And he lets it known that he is gunning after Rollins even after Baron Corbin took him out early in the night as he says, Love how you couldn't pin me, Rollins. You avoided me because you couldn't beat me. So that's stomping ground. Terrible name for a pay-per-view, by the way. I don't care what management has to say about that or this, but I'll be main eventing that show against you, Seth. Not that bald-headed freak show, Baron Corbin. That's what everyone wants. So make it happen. Whoa, 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 straight edge boy. You lost. You deserve to go to the back of the line. But I'll humor you and I'll talk to management. I'll see what I can. Oh, save it. If Rollins doesn't want to fight me and if I'm not in that match at stopping ground, there will be no match. That is my promise. And with Corbin smirking, he leaves. And backstage, it's absolute chaos as management doesn't want Punk to receive another shot of the world title. But instead, he has to earn it. And although Punk isn't happy that he isn't getting a shot that he believes he deserves, he accepts it and leaves the building. So the following week, Punk is in the ring and we find out who he has to overcome to face Corbin and Rollins at Stomping Ground. If Punk wants another shot, he's going to have to go against the Almighty, and Lashley's dominating Punk. He's clearly struggling with the much larger Lashley, but he fights on. He tries everything to keep him down, but Lashley might be too much for him to handle. He's going to beat him with big power move after big power move, and Punk is trying to fend it off as best as he can. Then after more and more power moves, Lashley goes into the corner. He's looking for a spear. He launches at Punk, but he catches him and nails a huge kick, which rocks Lashley to his core. Punk has a chance. Can he capitalize? He picks him up, and with all of his power he has left in the tank, he hoists him up and plants him with a GDS. Punk has done it. He earns another opportunity at Seth Rollins along with Baron Corbin, who beats down Punk following the contest. Corbin even goes to the outside and is looking bleak for Punk. Rollins and Corbin are going at it, and as soon as Rollins gets on top, Punk gets the last laugh. But who will walk out as Universal Champion? Well, it's a phenomenal triple threat match. Corbin has the power, Rollins has the athleticism, and Punk has the fight. It's an absolutely classic affair with Corbin proving all his doubt is wrong, whilst Punk and Rollins' bitter hatred towards each other is amplified in the ring. They can't stay away from each other. Even if Corbin dominates the match, they'll still try and slug it out with one another. But Corbin is becoming too much for Ivy Man to handle. He's too strong, so they have to put their hatred aside and work together. And eventually, Punk nails a huge dive on Corbin for the announcer's table, but he took himself out, and Rollins takes full advantage and puts Corbin down with a stomp in the ring. It's heartbreak for Punk, who once again loses out on a chance to beat Rollins and become champion without even getting pinned. And on the following night of Raw, Punk is furious. He storms out on the opening of the show, stands in the center of the ring, and although he's angry, he calmly states, You want to know the funniest thing? I thought this company had changed, but they haven't. This company will never change. This stupid company. Oh yeah, I also don't give a shit about your stupid PG ratings too, by the way. I can't stand it. So you know what? Suspend me. Do what you want me for saying this. I couldn't give less of a shit if you paid me billions. Vince, Paul, Stephanie, Shane, go f yourselves. You wealthy, can't book a f show pieces of shit. I'm done with this stupid bullshit where I can't get a one-on-one -on -one championship match. Fine then, I'll go to Ring of Honor, I'll go to AEW, I'll go where the f I want. And if you don't know what I want, let me make it more clear for you. Vince, I want you to fire me, you old wrinkled piece of shit. I know you're watching in the back. I want you to fire me or 
die because clearly you can never let the rain go no matter how much this place suffers you'll just collect all the money you want and you don't know what else his microphone cuts out no one can believe what punk has just done and with this he walks right out the building but what is the next time we see him on live tv at SummerSlam? no at survivor series again no is he a surprise in the royal rumble once more no everyone is starting to think punk has once again took his ball and went home that is until CM Punk has substituted in for Roman Reigns against Goldberg and the match is on for the Universal Championship and Punk isn't messing around. He instantly hits a GDS but he knows he needs more and he hits two more and with the WrestleMania main event he always wanted, CM Punk becomes Universal Champion. But there's a caveat to Punk's moment and he stands in front of no one with a championship on his hands and he says, The only reason I came back was to get my WrestleMania main event no matter the cost. But is the cost too high? As if I'm expecting an answer. God, this is weird. Anyways, let me get to the point. I left with a lot of unfinished business, and there's three particular piggies I want to put down now that I've achieved my goals. One of them has become deranged, or two rather, as cosplaying like a six-year-old isn't a great gimmick. But one, in all fairness, has stayed phenomenal, and you're now on my show, AJ, and you can believe that. Punk has made his targets crystal clear, and on the following Raw, we hear from King Corbin as he says, Royalty doesn't often get involved in controversy, but unfortunately it regards gold, something I hold dearly to my heart. So at Money in the Bank, this is my challenge to you, Punk. Seth may be deranged, but I've got enough sense to know that I can beat you for the Universal Championship. I'll be watching SmackDown carefully as I await your answer. Corbin has laid out the challenge, but what will CM Punk's answer be? Well, on SmackDown, we get an answer very quickly as Punk opens the show and he says, Well, 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 looks like the man who's cosplaying with a plastic crown wants a crack at me, and that man just so happens to be on my list of people who I want to defeat and humiliate. So to answer your challenge you put forward on Monday, Corbin, it's a yes, your majesty. But I have one request. Come to my show. I want to see you in person before I whoop you in this ring. Come here if you have the balls. Punk lays down with Raw. He accepts the challenge and wants King Corbin at Money in the Bank. And from then on, both men fight whenever they see each other. But that's not all, as AJ Styles makes it clear that once he wins the vacant Intercontinental Championship, that he is gunning for Punk and the Universal Championship. But Punk is so occupied with Corbin that he doesn't even have a chance to respond to Styles. So they go on their own paths as Styles fights in the finals and wins the Intercontinental Championship. But what about CM Punk? Well, at Money in the Bank, the match is on and it's a brutal affair. Punk's speed and agility is superior than Corbin, but just like most matches Punk has been in since his return, the strength imbalance is beyond noticeable. Corbin is even able to dominate large portions of the match due to his sheer power, but Punk won't give up. He fights and fights no matter how bleak it seems, and eventually his resilience starts to overpower Corbin, and in the end, with a GTS, Punk retains. But straight after the match, the new Intercontinental Champion AJ Styles comes into the ring and blasts him with the belt. Punk has been blindsided, Styles is beating him down and he says, You think you could just forget about me, huh? You think you could just breeze past me and focus on a piece of garbage like Corbin? Yeah, let's just say our business is definitely far from finished. Styles leaves Punk in a bloody mess. The message has been sent. And the following week, a banged up Punk is standing in the ring and says, You really crossed the line at Money in the Bank, didn't you, AJ? Attacking me after my match? For someone who claims to be phenomenal, you sure can't attack me in my face. Did you want my attention so badly just like you craved attention from your dad? Well, either way, at Backlash, you're going to feel the backlash of your actions, AJ. You versus me for the universal and intercontinental championships and styles comes out with the intercontinental championship and says i didn't need to attack you from behind you know i did it to get under your skin i did it so you knew you had a target on your back you ignored me my challenge my warning and carried on like normal you don't get to do that anymore so at backlash we are on the match is official, everyone online is buzzing, and so are both men as they want to get their hands on each other and beat the other in the ring. They fight week after week, no one can separate the two future Hall of Famers, but they don't need to anymore as it's time, 
AJ Styles vs CM Punk for both the Intercontinental and Universal titles. And it's an absolutely classic affair between the two men. A dream match has become a reality in a one-on-one -on -one setting. And this time it doesn't get blown apart straight away. As during parts of the contest, it's just a fight. They trade blows, but no one has the advantage. And neither man gets counted out this time. And the match is reaching its climax. And they're still trading. Neither man will yield until eventually Styles will end. He gets worn down by the strikes from Punk, but Styles won't quit and after almost 30 minutes of stunning action, he's got Punk in a precarious position. He's got him lined up for a phenomenal forearm and he looks for it, but Punk counters into a GDS. It's a phenomenal sequence, no pun intended, and Punk becomes a double champion. Punk is ecstatic that he puts two of his demons to bed, but one of them won't stay asleep as Styles batters Punk after the match. It's a disgraceful act by Styles, but then Daniel Bryan comes out and runs him off. And on the following SmackDown, Punk calls Bryan to the ring, and as he's coming out, he says, Bryan, to me, you are one of the most respected athletes in this dump. So out of respect for you, I want to challenge you. No, 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 no. You got lucky at Backlash. So if he gets a shot, so do I. You know what? I, I have two championships, and I want to defend the honor and lineage of both belts. So at Extreme Rules, we'll run it back, you and me, Styles. And Brian. Triple threat, two out of three falls. First fall for the beautiful Intercontinental Championship, and the second fall for the Universal Championship. What a bombshell announcement by Punk! Brian can't believe it, and neither can Styles, but they can't think about it as Punk goes for Styles, and Brian just lets the action take place. And in the end, CM Punk stands tall and wishes Daniel Bryan good luck. And it's time for another dream match. All three men's histories are intertwining, and it comes ahead in a spectacular car crash. It's total non-stop action by all three men. They fight as if their lives depend on it. And it's actually looking like Punk might lose the first fall, as Styles lines him up and connects with a picture perfect phenomenal forearm but Brian saw it coming he takes him out and it's a running knee on a punk and we crown a new Intercontinental champion but there's still a match taking place can Brian become a double champion can Styles become Universal Champion or can CM Punk retain well the match resumes and after a further 15 minutes Punk makes Daniel Bryan go to sleep he retains his championship, but Styles is fuming that he didn't get pinned. And on the following SmackDown, his rage reaches a boiling point as he interrupts the second featuring Punk, and he doesn't even say a word. They absolutely maul each other to pieces, and with the carnage escalating further and further into chaos, it's announced there'll be a one final match between the pair at SummerSlam. But the rivalry is too here to just be resolved in a regular singles contest, as it's also announced that there'll be a no holds barred match between the pair. And on the night of SummerSlam, the carnage is immense. Everything is dismantled around them and used as weapons. Chairs, candlesticks, steel stairs, even tables. They're throwing everything at each other to try and keep the other down. But who will stand tall? Styles looks for a phenomenal forearm, but once again, Punk counters into a GDS. But this time, Styles slips out and is looking to make Punk tap. Will he tap? No! Punk fights out and with a GDS, he puts the feud to bed. But this night is remembered for one particular reason, above all others, as the night Roman Reigns returns. CM Punk has returned home at Survivor Series, but he didn't come empty handed, as once Rollins lost his United States Championship, Punk brings his own belt into the company, and he stands on the ramp and asks one very simple question. Do I have everyone's attention now? And with that, Punk walks off with Rollins enraged. And on the following Raw, we kick off with the man himself who brings out the belt no one thought would be on WWE TV. And he stands on the ring and says, Well, 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 isn't this cathartic? Now I'm just going to get to a point. This championship I'm holding is absolute garbage. I'm here and the reason I'm starting off the show is to announce that at the Royal Rumble, 30 superstars, including myself, won't be just fighting for a main event at WrestleMania because the winner of that match will become World Heavyweight Champion. It's an absolute bombshell of an announcement from Punk, and it's also made official that Punk will be in the Rumble alongside someone else. Burn it down! And that man confronts Punk on the ramp and says, 
So you're back, Phil. Back in my company. Just don't overstay your welcome. Otherwise, I'll stomp you out like that cancer you are. <laughs> and with that, they continue on their separate paths. And leading into the rumble, Punk is seen having interactions backstage and in the ring with the likes of Johnny Gargano, Kevin Owens and especially Seth Rollins. Some are friendly interactions, although others, not so much. But at the rumble, Punk is all business. He enters at lucky number 27 and he's showing that he hasn't missed a step. He manages to get big time eliminations over the likes of Braun Strowman and Johnny Gargano and he's made it out to the final four. Who will become World Heavyweight Champion? Will it be Cody Rhodes? Will it be Seth Rollins? Will it be Logan Paul? Or will it be C M? Pug. Well, Rhodes gets eliminated by Rollins after Sosako had distracted him, but Logan runs at Rollins, but the visionary counters and then sends Paul out as well. We're down to two. Who will start a new legacy? While they start slugging it out with one another, their sheer hatred towards each other is on full display. But Logan Paul isn't done with Rollins. He pops up on the apron and tries to distract him, but Rollins doesn't care. He's wanting blood from Pug. However, Johnny Gargano doesn't want the match to end this way. He takes out Paul, and the battle continues between the two athletes. Each man teeters on the verge of elimination, but neither man will quit. They both are desperate to win gold, and Pug is looking to hit Rollins with a GDS, but Rollins has a couple brutal elbows rocking Pug to his core, and Rollins clotheslines him out to become the World Heavyweight Champion. Pug can't believe it, he was so close to becoming champion, he's absolutely deflated, and walks to the back. And the following night, we open with the new champion who announces that there will be a number one contenders chamber match for his championship for the main event of WrestleMania, which we find out is also the case for Roman Reigns. But before then, CM Punk comes out to confront Rollins as he says, Look, I'm man enough to know that you were the best man last night, but you didn't pin me. So I want you to know this, that when I win my qualifying match tonight and win that elimination chamber, that championship is mine. Punk has warned Rollins who replies, Phil, come on man, let's not be a downer about things. Now in all honesty, I hope you win, because then once I beat you again, everyone will see the cancer that is C. M. Punk. It's stern words from both men, but out of respect for the champion, Punk gives Rollins the ring as he knows he needs to prepare for this qualifying match next week. But who will his opponent be? Well, the following week, Punk is in the ring of the main event and is awaiting his opponent. You think you know me? If CM Punk wants to go to the Elimination Chamber, he'll need to overcome the rated R Superstar Edge. Punk is ready to put in the shift of his life, and the match is on! Punk is strong out the gate with a flurry of offense slowing down Edge, but his ring rust starts to get the better of him, and after his flurry, he gets dominated by Edge. He's all over him! Punk is being outmatched in every single way, and out of sheer desperation, Punk hoists Edge up for a GDS, but similar to Rollins, Edge hits crucial elbows to shatter Punk's hopes to put Edge to sleep as he slips out and nails a spear. Is Punk out? Is Punk done? No! Punk just kicks out a two and Edge is lining him up for another but then here comes Judgment Day. They're looking to screw Edge and they do just that as Edge is distracted long enough for Punk to hit a GDS which does indeed put Edge to sleep. Punk by the skin of his teeth advances but he couldn't do it on his own and a scene of doubt is put into everyone's minds. And leading into the show, Punk is seen trying to prove the doubt was wrong in the ring whilst also scolding his opponents on the mic. But it's time for the Elimination Chamber and the competitors include the man himself, Johnny Gargano, Damian Priest, Kevin Owens, Tommaso Ciampa and Omos. And Punk has to fight for the number one position. And he has a hell of a performance, he mixes it up with everyone, he has the technical masterclass of Johnny Gargano, he has an outright fight with Damian Priest, Kevin Owens and Tommaso Ciampa and he tries to topple the big man Omos. But in the end, it's down to two. It's between CM Punk and Kevin Owens. And they're using the structure to their advantage. They tear lumps out of each other. And Punk is starting to get on top. His MMA background is paying dividends. But Owens fights back. However, after a phenomenal 10 minute mini match, Punk is in the same position as his previous matches. He's getting elbowed by Owens. And he fights out of the GDS. He then looks for a stunner. But Punk catches him, spins him around. And makes Owens go to sleep. Punk has punched his ticket to the main event at WrestleMania. 39 to face the man who wants him gone.
And after a constant war, it's time for the finale. Seth Rollins, the World Heavyweight Champion, against the voice of the voiceless CM Punk. In the main event, Punk always wanted. And the match is generational. It's an absolute classic. Rollins flies everywhere as if he's 10 years younger. He won't slow down, but Punk makes him with a picture-perfect kick to the face. And Punk slows down the pace of the match. He wears down Rollins with moves and submissions, but the visionary fights back and eventually nails a pedigree. But he took himself out long enough for him, unable to connect with the stomp as when Rollins looks for it. He's caught and Punk looks for a GDS and he hits it. But Rollins has a ring of one a second to none. He saves himself from losing the gold and Punk gets desperate. And desperate times call for desperate measures. And Punk puts him in the ring. He lines him up. But Rollins tries the elbows, which is seemingly Punk's kryptonite, but he won't give up, and this time, he fights through it, and hits the GDS. Punk has done it, he becomes World Heavyweight Champion, he gets everything he's always wanted. But what if CM Punk never got injured? Well... CM Punk has just returned to the WWE, and up until the Rumble, everything about our timeline remains the same, until instead of our future shock DDT, McIntyre connects with a Glasgow kiss to Punk, forever altering this timeline. And of all the matches, the same as our timeline, the following night of Raw isn't. Punk is in the ring, and rather than cut a promo about his injury, he stands and says, When I came back, I was guaranteed my WrestleMania main event, but now that we know Cody is going to try finish his story again, I guess that leaves Rollins with no challenger, and that's where I... No, 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 no. You haven't earned that spot, Punk. I'm not having my opportunity ripped away from me by you just like you did last night, because you got lucky, Punk. I know it must suck, Drew, not being anywhere close to my popularity nor skill level. And I've only been back two months, so I'll ask the people, do you all want to see me kick Drew McIntyre's ass? Well, if you're so popular, punk, why don't we make a special occasion of our fight? You, me, in Perth. And we'll add a little bonus to it as well. The winner faces Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania. You're on. And with that, McIntyre walks off and demands for Adam Pearce to make it official, which he eventually does only because of one man. Do it. Make the match. Please. Fine. You know, you know what? Fine. Out of respect for you, Fine, I'll make the match. So the match is official, but before the next week, we see a very tense interaction between two bitter rivals. Don't know why you asked for the match to be made, Rollins. You can barely walk. So when I beat the Scottish wimp, I won't be nice to your leg. Ah, 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 ah. And Rollins leaves Punk unbelievably bamboozled. And on the following Raw, Punk is seen backstage as it's looking like he's making his way towards the ring until BOOM! McIntyre blindsides Punk with a Claymore and starts beating him down. It's unbelievable from the Scottish Terminator. He then picks him up and starts making his way towards the ring. He then plants Punk on the announcer's table and continues to beat down. No one can stop him. He then hurls Punk into the steps, redecorates the announcer's table and puts Punk through it. McIntyre has made an example out of his opponent for Perth, and he leaves Punk lying in a pool of his own blood. And Punk isn't in the ring the following week due to the injuries he sustained. But McIntyre is, and he obsesses over Punk as he stands in the ring and says, You know, when I came back into this company, I wasn't expecting to see Punk in this place again. But here we are. After he screwed me out of headlining WrestleMania to get the moment I deserve, but I have a chance to rectify that, to win a world title in front of a live crowd. And to do that, all I have to do is beat CM Punk in Perth. I mean, it was pretty easy last week, so I shouldn't have any troubles with kicking your stupid head clean off and go on to face Rollins at the biggest show of the year. Oh, and by the way, Punk, I know you're watching and I have a question that me and my wife are wondering. How's AJ doing? And after centering his entire promo around Punk, he leaves. And it's the go home show before Elimination Chamber. And Punk is once again not in the building, or so we think. As for McIntyre is once again talking about Punk, the man himself walks out battered and bruised, looking to fight. And he makes his way towards the ring, and McIntyre goes towards Punk. But then he hurls the chair to McIntyre's skull. And once again, the brawl is on. But it ends abruptly as Punk crushes his knee brace into McIntyre's skull. It's going to be an even playing field in Perth, as Punk says. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. And with that, Punk leaves and the match is set. 
CM Punk vs Drew McIntyre Winner becomes the number one contender for Seth Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship And the match is vicious They slug it out in large parts of the match They won't stay away from each other But they're both weak They've taken each other out before the match to the point where after 10 minutes the match is reaching its dying stages McIntyre is getting on top but Punk won't quit And he's trading shots with McIntyre And he lifts him up but he's too weak His back collapses under the pressure And McIntyre takes full advantage as with one Claymore McIntyre punches his ticket to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. Punk can't believe it, he's absolutely deflated. But his presence isn't done with for this show yet, as he surprise attacks Rollins before his segment can begin whilst Austin Fury and Grayson Waller take out Cody Rhodes, which opens the door for Damien Priest to cash in and become World Heavyweight Champion. No one can believe it, especially McIntyre who confronts Priest backstage following his big win. But where does this leave Punk and Rollins? Well even though Rollins is occupied with the bloodline, he's forced to make time for Punk as the voice of the voiceless assaults Rollins. He's got his WrestleMania target crystal clear, and Rollins does too, as after the assault he grabs a microphone and passionately says, Don't you worry you stuck up precious little bitch, I'll fight you at WrestleMania. It doesn't have to be for a title, I'll stomp you out of this company and get rid of the cancer before it spreads any further. It's strong words from Rollins, although McIntyre brings up a point to Rollins the following week as he says that Rollins is stretching himself too thin with the bloodline and CM Punk, who has a promo later on in the show, and he says, Do you want to know a fun fact, Rollins? I never truly disliked you until you said you were the best, because you're not. I'm the best. I'm the best in the world. And you think I'm a cancer? That's fitting seeing as your career only got to this point because I pitched an idea for a group of hounds and it just so happened to be that your name came up. You were lucky. A lot of people know this, but some don't. It wasn't just Roman who was the second choice. You were the last. We were gonna go with Chris Hero, but then Paul for some god awful reason stuck up for you, so no wonder he's the doofus son-in-law. And Rollins has heard enough. He storms out and screams. I guess at WrestleMania we'll see who the inferior superstar is, won't we? But on like you, if I lose, I won't complain for a decade straight about the company that built you up for only for you to return back and pretend that nothing ever happened. This will never be your home CM Punk. So long as my heart is still beating, you'll always be an outcast. That is my promise. Okay, but gone. Go be a Cody Avenger, whatever the hell you call yourselves. You two deserve each other, honestly. At least you're taking out Dwayne. And Punk soon follows Rollins as he leaves the ring and the building. But leading up to WrestleMania, things get even more heated as they constantly fight. It doesn't matter if it's the opener of Raw or at the end of SmackDown, Punk and Rollins fight everywhere until the show shows. And Punk and Rollins open night two of WrestleMania, which Punk is visibly unhappy with. And he channels that energy into a vicious attacks onto Rollins. He beats Rollins down, who was nowhere near 100%, but he fights on regardless, and he even gets Punk into a powerbomb position, but his back gives out. McIntyre was right, he stretched himself too thin, and Punk takes advantage as he blasts Rollins with a GDS, but he isn't done, as he calls on an almost lifeless Rollins to his feet, and Punk nails another. He puts Rollins to sleep, but after the match, Rollins may have proved himself right as another press conference incident revolving around Punk occurs. And with that, this chapter of Punk's career comes to a close, although it's only just begun. And if you like this story, I think this might interest you.